get hit first, they come to you first. They want to know what's going on, what you can do to help them. And in some cases, uh, even with search and rescue, you have, you really uh, get hit first. They come to you first. They want to know what's going on, what you can do to help them. And in some cases, uh, even with search and rescue, you have uh, some of the least reach in terms of availability of resources. And uh, the one thing I will say, and I really want to thank uh, uh, my FEMA director, she's done one thing that, and uh, we had a great FEMA director in the past as well, um, that makes it work. When you get local, state, and federal working together, it is more than three times. It's, a, it's like ten times what it would be if just having one movie. And uh, the losses uh, that we witnessed today are profound. Dozens of lost lives, homes destroyed in, in Manville, including by gas leaks triggered by the flooding, um, damaged infrastructure, including the rail system. And my thoughts are with all those families affected by the storms and all those families who lost someone they loved. And understand there's still two, is it two people missing or? Four. Four people still missing. And I especially want to thank, uh, and it's an overused phrase, but the brave first responders. I, uh, you know, we have, uh, who have exemplified the courage uh, both in New Jersey and next door in New York. They've done an incredible job. And we're working closely with Governor Murphy, and we're going to continue to do so. I'm here to see firsthand what the damage is and find out directly from you all what, what is uh, most needed. Now, look, FEMA uh, has been, I hope, as responsive as we've intended them to be, and I'm sure they have. 132 personnel from FEMA so far, including uh, federal search and rescue teams, including 60 individuals, uh, incident management assistant teams, and 20 people to support uh, these uh, uh, response uh, operations, and mobile emergency response support teams, six of them, uh, to provide uh, communication and logistic support. And on Sunday, when, uh, I, when the governor, we spoke to the governor, and he asked for the uh, major disaster declaration, we made it available immediately so, uh, so that we could uh, speed federal assistance as quickly as we could to hard-hit communities. FEMA administrator is on the ground here in New Jersey yesterday, I believe, to assess the damage. She's visited two communities, Mullica Hills and uh, uh, Winona, hit by the tornado, as, and uh, was on the ground just, uh, what, for over 13 miles that was on the ground, that tornado, those tornadoes. HHS secretaries work with the state to make sure folks uh, on Medicare, Medicaid, get the emergency care they need now. And we're going to make sure the relief is equitable so that those hardest hit get what they need. And, they, uh, and we know there's a lot more to do. That's why we're here. For decades, uh, scientists have warned of extreme weather uh, would be more extreme. And climate change was here. And we're living through it now. We don't have any more time. I hope no one uh, I've been on the telephone or on the road uh, an awful lot uh, between uh, California, Idaho, uh, New Orleans, uh, excuse me, not New Orleans, Louisiana, but in New Orleans, Mississippi, and, uh, you know, here. I mean, every part of the country, every part of the country is getting hit by extreme weather. And uh, we're now living in real time what the country is going to look like. And if we don't do something, we can't turn it back very much, but we can prevent it from getting worse. And uh, so uh, we're all in this together, and we've got, to, uh, we've got to make sure that we don't leave any community behind. And it's all across the country. You know, the members of Congress know from their colleagues in Congress that, uh, you know, the looks like a tornado, they don't call them that anymore, that hit the crops and, and wetlands in the middle of the country, and in Iowa, and Nevada, and I mean, it's just across the board. And, uh, you know, um, uh, as I said, we're in this together. And uh, so one of the things that today I'm going to ask you about when we get into this, some question and answers here, is about um, 
uh, how we're going to build back, and we're going to build back realizing what the status of the climate is now, what the trajectory of it is going to be, and we can no longer, we all know, we can't just build back to what, what it was before. Whatever damage done in New Jersey, you can't build back and restore what it was before. Because another tornado, another uh, 10 inches of rain is going to produce the same kind of results. So I want to talk a little bit about the specifics, about the things you think you would need, not just to get back to normal, but to get back to a place where if it happened again, the damage would be considerably less. That's what this is all about, in my view. This is an opportunity. I think the country's finally acknowledged the fact that global warming is real and it's moving at an incredible pace. And we've got to do something about it. I'm going to be going from here to what the COP29 in Glasgow for the world meeting together and how we're going to deal with climate change. And it is, it's, I think we're at one of those inflection points where we either act or we're going to be we're going to be in real, real trouble. Our kids are going to be in real trouble. So I want to thank you, and I yield back to you, Gov. Thank you, Mr. President. Amen to all. And again, we can't thank you enough for being here, for all your support. Another person who we're going to hear from next has been there for us, and Deanne Criswell, who's the administrator for FEMA. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, conversations over the past several weeks, harking back to Henri, which also wreaked some havoc uh, in New Jersey, but nothing like Ida. Madam Administrator, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Governor. Um, and thank you to all the elected officials, commissioners, and mayors that are here today. Um, I'd actually like to start by giving a big shout out to all of the first responders um, that have been supporting the life saving efforts over the, the last few days. Uh, many of them in your own communities, many of them who have had damages to their own homes. Um, and I just want everybody to know the hard work that you do is really appreciated um, at, you know, in your communities, but also um, at the federal level as well. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, you are the ones on the ground. Um, I always say, and you've heard from others as well, disasters always start and end local. And so we want to make sure that we're here to support the first responders. Um, I did spend yesterday visiting some of the damaged areas and meeting with local officials. Um, I toured Mullica Hill and Winona and witnessed firsthand the destruction that these tornadoes did bring. Um, but because of the President's swift action in declaring a major disaster declaration, we've been able to now provide aid to some of the families um, who have been impacted, um, specifically uh, those individuals that live in Bergen, Gloucester, excuse me if I get these wrong, pronounce them wrong, uh, Hunterdon, Middlesex, Passaic, and Somerset. And, it's okay uh, as long as you send the money. I'm sending money. I bring a checkbook, Mr. President, that you gave me. Um, and we're continuing to do damage assessments today. So I have staff on the ground today that are doing assessments in Essex, Hudson, Union, and Mercer. And, you know, we wanted to be able to get this disaster declaration in place quickly, knowing that we still needed to do additional damage assessments to really get a better understanding of the scope of the impact um, that the communities are experiencing across New Jersey. Um, so far, we are actually already have over 7,000 families that have registered for assistance, and that number will continue to grow. Um, but if they haven't registered yet, um, individuals can go to disasterassistance.gov, they can go to our FEMA app, or they can call 1-800-621-FEMA. That's 1-800-621-3362. Additionally, we're going to have teams that are going in the neighborhoods. Um, they will also be in the recovery centers when they're established. If you haven't registered, they can assist you with registering. If you have and you have questions about your case, just find somebody with a FEMA shirt and they'll help you understand where it's at and if you, uh, if you need to provide any more information. I, mean, I think, you know, the thing that's been remarkable over the last few weeks in watching the track of Hurricane Ida um, that really caused damage across nine states is that the weather events such as these are just becoming more normal. They're becoming more common, but they're more severe and they're more intense. And the effects of climate change that are causing these storms um, is here. And it's our job to make sure that we are all ready to respond as well as prepared. And FEMA is really committed to helping with making communities more resilient. Um, we recently um, authorized on behalf of the President, 
close to $5 billion in hazard mitigation funding to help um, give communities that extra resource to build that resiliency. Um, it's just the first step, but FEMA wants to be an active participant in this role of making sure that we're preparing to reduce the impacts from the future risks that we're going to continue to see as a result of climate change. And then lastly, I'd just like to say uh, this is September um, and it is National Preparedness Month and our theme this year is Prepare to Protect. And I think what we saw over the last week is that nobody is immune from the threats that we're facing from these disasters. Um, I read recently that it said one in three Americans have already experienced a major disaster this year. I can't you know, verify that number, but it's there. People are experiencing these events. We need to invest in reducing the risk that these communities are facing, but we also need to make sure that we're helping individuals be prepared. And so if you don't have an emergency plan, please go to ready.gov and there's some great information there to help you prepare for um, what you may be experiencing in the future. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, Thank you, you, Governor. Thank you, Deanne. Thank you for the major disaster declaration for those six counties, including this one, and for your work to hopefully add to that list. Uh, I know your team is, is on that. Again, it's disasterassistance.gov if you're in those six counties. If you're not in the six counties, uh, we have a, a, a website set up, nj.gov slash IDA, and hopefully that's a landing place for now for folks to go until, please, God, they get designated. Uh, as a disaster uh, uh, county. So thank you for everything. You, you all have been extraordinary. Um, we're in Somerset County uh, and we're honored to have the commissioner director with us, an outstanding leader. Here are a few words from Chanel Robinson. Chanel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, Governor. And welcome to all of you to Somerset County's Emergency Operations Center. And thank you for visiting to see the catastrophic damage that Ida brought firsthand. We all greatly appreciate your commitment to our recovery and especially for our inclusion in FEMA's disaster, major disaster declaration. So again, thank you for that. Now as you tour Manville today, you will see the heart and spirit and the resilience of the people of Somerset County. You will see the devastation that Ida brought, but nevertheless, we will continue to do and build a better and stronger community. Hurricane Ida is our fourth, understand, our fourth storm of the 100-year storm in just over two decades. And as you mentioned, Mr. President, uh, it's only going to get worse. But this historic storm has hit us particularly hard. You know, in Somerset County, uh, the result was not just a deluge of waters, but a deluge of emergencies. And our own Somerset County 911 Communications Center fielded over 13,000 calls that night, 5,000 of them being 911. 520 air and water rescues where people were rescued from their vehicles or from their homes. 170 fire alarms, eight explosions, and there are countless of automobile accidents and injuries. But as we all can uh, attest to and can agree to, is that our first responders, state, local rescue teams risk their own safety to save the lives of, of the residents of not only Somerset County, but the state of New Jersey. And I would be remiss if I did not thank our Somerset County Department of Public Works, who were with their front loaders rescuing uh, people who were out there cleaning the debris, making sure the roadways were safe and blocked from those that entered into dangerous paths. But also during the worst of the raging waters in our Millstone and Raritan Rivers, they raged over our 750 bridges here in Somerset County alone. But yet, our workers were there to make sure that they were doing all that they could to make sure that our residents were safe. And sadly, six Somerset County residents lost their lives to the flood waters. We must continue to hold their families and loved ones in our prayers and in our hearts. But again, because of Ida's devastation, we know that we can not forget that we must endure as we have thousands of people that are continuing to seek shelter. Our collective mission now, as you see around the room, you have local, county, 
state and federal officials coming together to making sure that we get our families back into our homes, make sure that our businesses are operating again, and to repair and restore our public infrastructure. Here in New Jersey, there is a strong connection. Again, the leadership are in the room. There's a strong connection to make sure that we're doing all that we can for the residents of New Jersey, not just Somerset County. And we must do all that we can to make sure that the residents know that we have their back. And as you said, Commissioner, or Administrator, we're here to prepare to protect. And if the residents do not feel that we have their backs, then we fail them. So over the weekend, we've transitioned from emergency response to disaster recovery. This will not only take weeks, but months or even longer. We will never be back to close to normal, but all we can do is do better. We will need FEMA, Red Cross, state and local OEM and nonprofits to come together to ensure that the recovery is not just for some, but for all. So again, thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Governor, and thank you to all of you for your resiliency and for your deep concern for not only, some, not only Somerset County, but the state of New Jersey and your commitment to our recovery. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you, Chanel. Great leadership by you and your team, as you said, at the county and local level, and heroism all over the state by first responders. With your blessing, Mr. President, I think we have one more speaker before our friends in the press leave, and that is the superintendent of our state police, Colonel Pat Callahan, who has been there every single day during this pandemic and certainly through Ida and all the other weather challenges we've had. Pat, over to you. Thank you, Governor, for that introduction and, and certainly for your continued leadership uh, through probably some of the most challenging times in New Jersey's history. Uh, and thank you, Mr. President, especially for your kind words about the state police uh, Delaware State Police is pretty good, too, Mr. President. Um, the best. <laughs> but your presence here uh, sends a strong message to all of us and to our residents uh, that that support from not only response, recovery, mitigation, that the federal government's here. And we saw that yesterday when the administrator and I uh, walked around and spoke to those homeowners. So thank you. Uh, and I also want to take this opportunity to thank uh, and get, offer my gratitude for the swift offers of assistance that we got from the White House, from FEMA, Department of Defense, HHS. Uh, it's an honor to stand shoulder to shoulder with all of you and show the, the rest of the country what it means to be uh, a true collaborative effort here. So thank you. Uh, and just a little bit about the day of the storm, Mr. President. Uh, that morning of at 10 a.m., we hosted a call with the National Weather Service, all of our county OEM coordinators, our state emergency management partners. Um, we activated our SEOC two hours later, and, and then in short order, that un unprecedented amount of rainfall just uh, staggered, staggering rate fell and ravaged our state, uh, upending families and causing a horrible loss of life, as you've heard. Um, to give a broad picture, very few areas were unscathed. Flooding occurred uh, in 10 of our 21 counties that were normally not flood prone. Um, and as we witnessed yesterday, that EF3 that hit down on that 13 mile path, uh, starting with uh, over in Harrison Township, all the way up through Winona and out. Um, so it, that all happened in a period of about nine or 10 hours, yep. uh, almost three months of rain in about five hours, just uh, unprecedented. Uh, the rivers exceeded their levels even today. Uh, the Passaic River is, well, Passaic River is not expected uh, to fall below blood, uh, flood stage until tomorrow. Uh, we might even be expecting some rain tomorrow, which we're keeping an eye on, as you could uh, well know. Uh, and Mr. President, while we prepared our roadways, we, uh, we cleared storm drains and debris. Uh, the amount of rainfall was overwhelming. Whole roadways were actually swept completely away. Uh, motorists were stranded for hours, and as you know, sadly, some of them never made it home. Our search and rescue personnel, just at the state level alone, had 543 rescues, and collectively, our local first responders, to your point, more than 3,500 rescues in that time, leaving their own families, leaving their own homes, uh, and our missing persons operations are still ongoing for those four. Um, 
the preliminary damage assessments have been happening at a rapid rate uh, and as we know that those four additional counties that we're hopefully going to get there so thank you for that um, the debris removal costs alone for this one are going to be staggering as everybody in the room knows uh, and some of our most economically vulnerable populations have been hit the hardest uh, with many individuals who lost their homes they lost their vehicles and they lost their jobs all in that 10-hour period um, shelter is going to be a need temporary housing uh, the debris removal uh, uh, and sadly unemployment and funeral assistance for uh, for several of those families um, but I would like to point out that the damage that we witnessed uh, probably would have been significantly worse if it wasn't for the mitigation efforts that New Jersey had in place for the past several years thanks to our partnership with FEMA uh, in New Jersey uh, we have a return of six dollars in savings for every dollar spent from our mitigation I think that puts us in the top five of the 50 states which is pretty phenomenal so that's under Governor Murphy's leadership our climate and flood resilience program uh, and interagency council on climate resilience is undertaking bold and comprehensive actions to ensure uh, that our communities and infrastructure are more resilient for future storms and I know that's what you spoke of in your remarks uh, that resiliency can't mean bouncing back resiliency has to be bouncing forward uh, because these storms are going to keep coming so investing that federal funding in our state will certainly ensure that we're building a better nation together and I know that that's a priority for you and your administration so in closing I echo the governor's remarks and welcoming you here to New Jersey while I certainly wish it were under different circumstances uh, but having lived your life in our neighborhood uh, you know that we're a strong resilient people uh, in a tough state and I together I know that we're going to get our families and our citizens uh, back uh, and forward from where we need to be so uh, thank you sir it was an honor thank all your troopers for us too will you? for real Pat thank you and, and, and it has to be said